We all left India. You came to Dubai. So it's such a difference from India. Because it was. No, I'm okay with it. Yeah. So it's a surprise for me to see so many ladies here after being used to speaking to the men. Anyway, uh, you're all here to celebrate this holy month of Damodar, right? We call it Damodar month. Usually, we Pratika, of course, is one of the names of Srimati Radharani. It's a favorite month, our favorite month. Of all the months of the year, it's considered the most special, the most auspicious. There are many festivals during this month, like the appearance of Radha Kund. Have any of you been to Radha Kund? Yes. Did you go to Radha Kund, some of you? Yes. Govardhan. We have, of course, Govardhan Puja this month. And we have also, actually, was it yesterday or today? Yesterday was Gopastami. Gopastami. No, Bahuastami. Yeah, Bahuastami. We call it also Gopastami. It's the day when Krishna starts taking the cow. Because as a young boy, he would take the calves. But when you get to, uh, you know, Krishna's childhood is in faith. There's the Komar stage, which is the first five years. And then the next stage is called Proganga, which is six to, up to the end of the end. And then Kishore, which is 11 up to... 15, end of 15. So from the age of 11 up to 15, he's taking the cows. He's not taking the calves anymore. So that was yesterday. And today, well, today, as in every day in the month of Kartik, we're worshiping Dhamma. This is a very special feature of this festival of Damodar. Usually a festival is one day. Janmashtami we celebrate one day. Radhashtami one day. Govardhan Puja one day. And even Diwali one day. But Damodar every day for one month we're celebrating. Are you all singing, singing the song? You know also the song, Damodarastika? Yes. Oh, good. Very nice. Yes. So, and we, we sing this song every day and we offer the land to learn Damodar. It's a very simple worship. It's not very elaborate. It's very simple. You can offer up any kind of land, any kind of uh, Playing candles, sometimes we offer candles. So just before I came to Dubai, I was in Calcutta for one evening, and we did a program in, in Tara. One of our devotees arranged a program at their home, and uh, we just went outside the house, outside their front door, and they were somehow their home was on quite a busy road. And they arranged to have prasadam distribution and offering of lights. And they had prasadam for 500 people. And they had so many lights, hundreds of lights as well. So in practically less than, less than one hour, like half an hour, all, all the lights were offered and all the prasadam was distributed. You know, that's Calcutta. <laughs> It's very special. So I, I was telling one of our devotees in Malaysia about that. And she told me, she said, yeah, well, we tried it in Malaysia. She said people wanted the prasadam, but they didn't want to offer the lights. Well, that's the difference between India and Malaysia. 
we put them in the air more time. They are more uh, willing to do something like offer a land. It's such a simple thing to do, to offer a land. And that is how we uh, show our devotion to God Krishna during this special month. Of all the, the plants, there are many nice plants, but the most dear, most sacred of all plants is Tulsi. Tulsi is very dear to Lord Krishna. And then of all uh, rivers, the most sacred is right. And of all mountains, what's the most sacred mountain? And of all the scriptures, the most sacred scripture of the Vedas, like that. So, and of all the months of the year, the most sacred month is this So we show our devotion to Krishna during this time. Many devotees go to the holy place. They we want to go to a holy place like Vrindavan. And during this time also, people make vows. Have you made any vow for this month? Yes, you've made a vow? What's your vow? What vow did you make? Kartik Kartik Yeah, eating one. Eating one meal a day, every day for Kartik one of the devotees was just telling me this morning that they've made the vow, they're just taking uh, Ikhavasi Prasad every day. They don't want to take, they're not taking any planes during this month. The, the actual injunction, which uh, Srila Prabhupada gave us, is that we shouldn't take Erdal. Erdal. Erdal is high protein. So the, the and actually they said you shouldn't eat any meat during the Kartik breath. No, so even people who are meat eaters, they're told don't eat any meat during this month. It will be very healthy and very good for you. Even though they may regularly eat meat, but you should encourage them during this month of Kartik to eat the vegetarian. You don't take meat. High protein foods like uh, pulse dal, you know, the, the masur dal, this kind of thing, very high protein. High protein is, makes us more rajasri, right? We all, we're already rajasri. <laughs> and if we take this kind of food, then it, it increases, it, it, does, it doesn't help us so much. So we try to avoid that. We try to like avoid things like soya and, 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 and chana. These things are very high protein. So the month of Kartik, we want to be less rajasic and tamasic and more more the mode of goodness. So this is the point during this month. Different people make different vows, you know, like at the time of the book, he's taking in Kandasi. Some people, oh, there's a, there's a period at the end of the month, which is called the Bhisma Pancha. It begins on the Ekadasi, the second Ekadasi of the, so there's two Ekadasis in the month of Pancha. So the second Ekadasi is the first day of the Bhisma Pancha. His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Maharaj, he always observes the Bhisma Pancha, right? Yeah. So some of you may also like to do this. It, it says that if you didn't do anything for Chaturmasya, yeah, now usually, you know, I don't, you know, four months, you know, it, it's difficult, you know, to try to follow anything for four months. So if you didn't do anything very strictly over the chapter Masya, you can get the same benefit by observing Bhisma Panchak, which is the last five days of the chapter Masya. And it begins on the Ikarasi, the second Ikarasi. It's a very, it's a very special Ikarasi that day. It's very, 
very nice ekad. Ekadesin means the day to increase hearing and chanting. To do more hearing and chanting. Some people think, well, I'm fasting. That's not the real purpose of Ekadesin. It's not the fasting. What really gets benefit from us is when we do Shravanam and Kirtan Vishnu. Shravanam Kirtan Vishnu. Hearing and chanting about the Lord. That will give us the benefit. We all want to get blessings, right? We want to get some blessing from the. You can get the greatest benefit when you do hearing and chanting about the Supreme Lord Krishna or Lord Vishnu. So this is how we want to observe the Ekadasi. So the last five days of this month, you can do that in different ways. And some people like Jaipataka Swami Maharaj. You've all met Jaipataka Swami Maharaj? Yeah? Not all. Jaipataka Swami Maharaj is the, like the pioneer been coming here for many years here in Dubai and many of the devotees are his disciples. There's a lot of disciples. Many, many, thousands of disciples. He concerns the Bhishma with many devotees in Mayapur. Usually he'll go to Mayapur for that. And he will observe it. They will take fruits and roots. Roots and roots also. That means no rice and no dal. And no, and no chapatis, no rotis. Right? What do you take? You can have fresh fruit or dry fruit. You have so many nice dry fruits here in Dubai. You get everything. Dates. You can live on dates. Uh, so, and you take some roots also. Roots mean tapioca. Sweet potato. Yeah, cassava. This can there are many things to eat. You know, don't worry. You won't starve. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people think, oh, if I don't eat rice, how will I live? You know, if you're Bengali, you know. In the same way, you know, if you're a Malwari or something, you have to have roti. Difficult without roti, but this is the this is a little tapasya to control the tongue. It's a bow. And the, why do we do that? So that you have more time to hear and to chant. If you have less time in the kitchen, less time cooking, means you have more time to do a japa, right? Have you got your big bag? No. Japa. People say, I have no time, I have to cook, I have to just eat fruits, you know, and salad. You don't have to spend so much time. <laughs> so there's always solution to the problems, to the difficulties. So the month of Damodar, some people they make they do these kind of vows. Some people go to Vrindavan, they will they're doing the parikrama going to the 12 forests of Vrindavan, walking every day. Hmm. Have you ever walked in Vrindavan? Yes. You walked? Yes. Did you walk barefoot? Yes. Really? Yes. Very good. Hmm. Yes. Lord Krishna always went barefoot. Of course, they, they didn't have the roads like what they have today. You know? The roads are terrible. The, the roads are not good. Anyway, 
you don't have to go in the 12 forests. You, you, Krishna is everywhere. Krishna is here also in the world. And Krishna is in our heart. The idea is we want to awaken, we want to purify the heart, clean the heart. And we do that by Shavana and Kirtana. Especially Kirtana is very good in this Kali Yuga. The Srimad Bhagavatam says, Kaler dosha nide rajam asvi eko mahaguna. Kirtana eva krishna shya mukta This is from Srimad Bhagavatam. That is the age of Kali. Kaler dosha nide. Dosha, do you have any doshas in your chart? Hmm? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on this channel, so funny. <laughs> Usually we have, we do have doshas, you know, we have these faults in our chart, you know. So the age of Kali is full of doshas, has so many faults. But there's one good thing about Kali. Kirtana Deva Krishna Shya Mukta Sangha Parambraja. You can get the supreme benefit of simply by Kirtana. This is the idea. We take shelter of the holy name, the chanting of the holy name. And of course, we do things like offering the lamps. Now, what about people who don't do these things? Again, you know, there's a story. I'll tell you a little story about this one man. He came to a holy place. Somehow, I don't know how he got to the holy place. You know, he wasn't nice. He didn't do it intentionally. He was just traveling around. And somehow he came to this holy place. And he saw, because it, it was this month, it was the month of Kartik, and he saw people how they were doing all the different pujas and people were chanting, some were doing kirtan and singing and dancing and some people were doing puja for the deities and ringing the bells and offering the lamps. He didn't do anything. He was just looking at them. You get people like that in your house when you do puja. Sometimes you know, you know they're, not, they're not very devoted. But they wonder, what's my wife doing? What's she doing? Anyway, he was looking and he was seeing the people do all the things, offered all the worship, didn't do anything. But he just looked and he heard people reciting. Are you reciting Damodar Astikam every day? Singing Gopi Gita also? Singing Gopi Gita? Yeah. yeah. Doing Gopi Gita also? Yeah. Any other prayers you sing? Do every day you prayers? Yes? Good. So, he had, he didn't know any prayers. He was just watching, listening. And what happened? It came to the last day of Karti. And just in the night, they were all making, it was, you know, very happy, the vows are over, and you have a, a nice posada at night, you know. We go back to the regular diet, we have a festival in the evening on the last day of party. And he was seeing everybody happy, good. And then what happened? A big snake appeared. A big black snake came and it bit him. It bit this simple man. So he got bit by the snake and he fell down. The snake was poisonous, deadly poisonous. The man fell down. Other the people were came trying to help him, sprinkle some holy water on him. Some people chanted the holy name, but he was already unconscious and he died. So the Yamaduts came and took him to Yamalok. So he came to Yamaraj. And so Yamaraj asked Chitragupta, who is this man? And Chitragupta said, oh, he said, this is a very bad man. 
never did anything good. He did all sinful things. So Yamada says, okay, take him to Kumbi Pakaloka. Do you know Kumbi Pakaloka? Huh? Kumbi Pakaloka. One of the hells in Yamaloka. And he a big walk. A big walk of boiling oil. And they take the soul there. And they throw him in the boiling aisles to be boiled in the burning hot oil. That's the punishment. So the Amaresh should take him to the Kumbi Park Loka, put him in the boiling oil. So the Yamadut took him, threw him into the pot, the boiling oil. But as soon as he went in the aisle, the oil became cool. The oil became just cool. It was no longer hot. Oh, the yam, all the yama look, all the yama dudes they were shocked. They said, oh, "What happened? We never saw anything like this. Why happened like this?" So at that time, Narada Muni came there. Narada Muni is you know, this great devotee. He's bhakta, and he came. He told them. He said, "You don't know. He said, See this man." He said, he never did anything good, but what he did do, he was in a holy place during the month of Kartik. And he didn't do anything, but he saw all the people doing things. And so because he watched people do all these activities, he got one sixth of the benefit. Of all their different activities. So all of his sins were destroyed. So I said, You cannot, you cannot do anything. To him. I said, No. I said, Okay, he's come here to Yamaloka. We'll take him around. We'll let him see the cows. And we'll have a look at what happens to the sinful people. He is lucky. He's been saved because he was in the holy place during the month of Karti. Take him around and show him the hell. And then Kuvina came and they took him up to Swargaloka. He went to heaven to be an, an assistant there in the higher form. Do you want to go to Swargaloka? Hmm? Hmm? I'm not very sure. <laughs> Dubai is close to Sparta. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on there. So, and we don't want to go to Sparta. So we should want to go. Go to the world. So then it was one story about the benefit of Dhammadurva. There's another interesting pastime. And it's about a young woman named Lali Kiva. She was, she was the daughter of a king. This king had many sons, and he only had this one daughter, Alvitika. And this one daughter, he got her married to the king of Kasi. And when she, she, when she's in Kasi with her husband there, she, every day during Kartik, she would light lamps all over, all over the kingdom. She would put lamps around every Vishnu temple. She would put them in the doorways of the houses. She would put them along the side of the river and she'd put them on the tops of the mountains. She had thousands of lamps burning every day. Wow, people were surprised. They thought, what's wrong with this woman? There's so many lights. You know, why is she putting so many lights everywhere? And so they asked her, you know, can you tell us? You know, why is it? Why do you put so many lights everywhere? She said, oh, you don't know the benefit of many lights. She said, you know, in my last life, you know who I was? Do you know? Anybody know who they were in their last life? Well, she knew. She said, in my last life, 
I was a mouse. She said I was a mouse and I was I was in a in a temple. And somehow I was living in some corner of a little temple. And I was very hungry. Little mice, not easy to get food. So she was a little mouse living in the temple. No food. Then she saw that somebody was offering the lamp. And the lamp was ghee. It was a ghee wick. So the little mouse, when they put the the gateway down to burn. The little mouse came forward, began to eat the ghee from the cotton. It was taking the cotton and eating the ghee, was satisfying the hunger of the mouse. But as the mouse was eating the gateway, a big cat appeared. And so, if you were in the little body, the body of a little mouse, and you see a big cat, how would you feel? Oh, you know. Little mice are always timid creatures, you know? And if a big cat comes, whoa. So the cat came, you know, big paws, the cat wants to take the mouse. And so the mouse was holding the gee wake, he was eating the gee wake. Gee wake was burning. One end was burning, he was eating the other end of the gee wake. And the cat came, so the mouse had the gee wake in his mouth. They, they ran away, the cat, the mouse ran away with the gateway still in its mouth, but it was a lot, it was burning. And because it was burning, the flames from the gateway set fire to the mouse. And the mouse came on fire, it was burning. And the mouse was burning, and that mouse was in the temple. Somehow the mouse, the, the gateway was right in front of the altar. And so the mouse had eaten the gateway and he was in front of the altar and he was on fire. So what did the mouse, you know, the mouse was jumping, jumping, like dancing, just like he was dancing and right in front of the demons. And in this way, the mouse died. But because he was dancing in front of the deities in the month of Kartik. So Krishna thought, oh, this mouse is he's dancing for my, my pleasure. And the next one, that little mouse became a princess. Very beautiful princess, very opulent princess. Oh, but that very good material bird just because she offered her body as a lamp to Krishna. So Lali Tika said, in my previous life, I was a mouse and I was, I was the lamp. So she said, I'm offering thousands of lamps. Now that I, I should get much better things for the next life. In this way, you can see the benefit of offering one lamp you can get so much benefit. You offer a lamp with devotion. The little mouse didn't even have real devotion, but just by chance, just unintentionally, became an offering to Krishna. And Krishna saw, oh, mouse is offering, mouse is dancing for me. Mouse, mouse has become a light for my pleasure. And Krishna saw, so you want to offer lamps to the Lord, it will be very pleasing to him. So there, there, there are many ways in which we can offer worship to the Lord. This is a very simple, very nice, pure and simple way which we can satisfy the Lord by offering one lamp to him for his pleasure. First, we don't want to just become a princess. Right? Maybe you were, maybe we were mice in our previous life. <laughs> and in our 
previous life with many births. In Bhagavad Gita, because Arjuna was surprised when Krishna said, I spoke the Bhagavad Gita to the sun god. So Arjuna is surprised. How could you speak to the sun god? The sun god so much senior by birth than you. But Krishna said, many, many births, both you and I have had, O oh Arjuna. I can remember all of them, but you cannot. Right? We don't we don't remember our previous births. But we have had many, many births. So we want to understand the nature of this material world. But there are many bodies, many different species of life taking birth and dying. We've been in this world for a long time. This world during the month of Kartik, this is a chance for us to finish that work and death in the material world. It's an opportunity for us to get ourselves out of the real world. Did you ever read our book, Coming Back, The Science of Reincarnation? Has any of you ever seen that book? Coming back, did you read it? Did you read it? Do you remember what's the title of the last chapter? The title of the last chapter. There's a book, it's about the science of re Do you all believe in reincarnation? Yeah? You sure? You're not just thinking about it, right? <laughs> Right. We believe the soul. The soul is eternal, the body is temporary. So, reincarnation, it's a science. And the book explains, gives some stories, some past tells, of, tells about past lives, and different people, what happened to them. But the last chapter is called Don't Come Back. Hmm? The book is called coming back, but the last chapter is don't come. Do you want to come back? No. You sure? Yes. Even if you don't come, even if you come back, if you come back to Dubai, is it okay? <laughs> yeah, association. So long as you get association, right? we won't mind to come back so long as we get association. But we, we do want to understand the nature of this world. We had one lady, one devoted lady, I remember I was in the USA at the time, and we were uh, distributing books for Shiva Prabhupada. And there was one American lady, and she had some part of the streets. And she was a very vigorous book distributor. But somehow her health failed and she's leaving her body. And so she met Prabhupada and she said to Prabhupada, she said, Srila Prabhupada, I just want to take birth again and come back and distribute your books. But Srila Prabhupada said to her, that's all right. If you don't have to do that, just go back to Prabhupada. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you want to come back and preach, it's, it's all right. The, what we want to do is whatever Krishna wants us to do, right? If Krishna wants us to come back, we can come back. And if Krishna wants us to go back, we are surrendered to him. He's the master. We are the same. So we have to always remember my position in relation to Krishna. Ekala Ishwara Krishna or all others are the servant. So we are also the servant. But to be the servant is more pleasing than to be the master. And that's why Lord Krishna himself comes in the mood of the devotee. And that's how he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to show everyone how to be a devotee, how to Chant the holy name. 
and how to develop the mood of Srimati Radharani, who is actually the head of this movement. So are there any questions? Anybody wants to ask any question? Maybe Mantaj is supposed to be having the doubt because the first story you said that uh, the person uh, unintentionally somehow he landed in the holy dam. So many people, many Mantajis want to visit holy dams, but due to certain conditions, family problems, her husband not cooperating, her distance, we could not go to the uh, holy dams. So that benefit, how we get staying in our place? Yes. So we have to understand that going to Mohidam is not just buying a ticket. <laughs> you don't enter the Holy Dam just by buying a ticket to go there. We have to change the mood, the consciousness. And Sri Prabhupada taught us, he said, I'm always in Vrindavan. He was in America, he said, but I'm always in Vrindavan. Because he said, I'm always thinking of Krishna. So it's not just going to a physical place, which is going to the Holy Dharma, but it's having a consciousness of Krishna, being in that consciousness that I am a servant of Krishna, that I want to worship him. So we want to understand, we can get the benefit of the Holy Dham by creating the atmosphere of the Holy Dham. Just like here, you created the atmosphere of the Holy Dham by having beautiful portraits of Krishna and Radha Dhammadar and all of these and offering lamps and doing worship. In this way, we're in the Holy Dham. Krishna says that there's one verse which says, Krishna says, I am not in the Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha means the spiritual world. And he said, I am not in the hearts of the yogis who meditate on me, but I am wherever my devotees like Narada are chanting my holy name. So chanting the holy name is very important the mood of the Holy Dawn. If you're regularly chanting the Holy Name and you're worshipping Krishna, read the book of Krishna, that is the mood of the Holy Dawn. We have Tulsi. You all have Tulsi here in your homes? Yes, you should do. It was so nicely here because the climate is a bit like Vrindavan. It's very dry, dusty. <laughs> so it's like that here. It's a bit like the desert, you know, bring out it's not far away from Rajasthan. A lot of sunshine, talk you like the sunshine as well. So you at one time he was in our town. Take, take my picture again. Tosi here and Prabhupada was sitting chanting the holy name. He said, This is all you need. Tosi and the holy name. Then that is the spiritual world. So the, the mood of the holy dham is created by our own consciousness, not just by you know, the ticket, not by just going to the holy place. But the consciousness. Sometimes we take people to the holy place and all they do is go shopping all the time. You, know? you go shopping, buy this, buy that. And the real purpose in going to holy place is to do hearing and chanting. You can hear here. You don't need to go there to hear. You can hear a lot here. There's so many people speaking every day, there's Prabhachan going on every day, there's lectures, you know, YouTube is there, Facebook is there, there's so many wonderful speakers you can hear, and you can have the mood of the Holy Dham 
without ever going out of your this by absorbing yourself in feelings and chanting. This is very important for us. So we don't want you to feel you're missing anything by going to the holy place. But rather, this is the holy place where the devotees are chanting and worshiping the heart. That is the holy place. Understand? Some people want to go to the holy place, they think to take the bath there. And you know, sometimes people often come to Radhakun, they want to take the bath there. Or they go to Yama, they want to take the bath. But actually, that's not the real purpose in coming to the holy place. What we should be doing is bathing our heart, leaving our ears in the sound of the glories of the Supreme Lord. We need to bathe the ears and the heart in the spiritual sound vibration. It's not just the physical bath. You think you just to take the bath, somebody, they will come and take the bath and then they go back. And then do all the bad things too. Go on with their sins. They come, give their sins, leave their sins in the in the water, and go back and continue sinning. They don't change. They don't give up the bad habits. So these people, that's not good, right? That's like the bathing of the elephant. We have some elephants in the you can see when they, they get nice and clean, they bathe them nicely. As soon as they come out, they throw dirt. <laughs> they have to throw dirt on themselves. Yeah. And so people are like that. They come, they bathe in the Ganga, go back to the most. Ganga didn't want to come to this planet. Because she didn't want all the people coming to bathe in her water. But Bhagirat Maharaj told her, well, if you come, all the sadhu and all the holy men will also bathe in your water. And they will not find all the sins. So that's why Ganga came. So we want to get the real benefit. And the real benefit is in hearing. Just like go to the holy place, it's not for the eyes. You don't go to the holy place just for the eye exercise. I want to see what we what we want to do is to hear. We have to hear. We have to hear about Krishna. We have to hear about the holy name. We have to hear the glories of the great devotees who are serving the Lord. They have to hear the kirtan. So don't feel you're missing anything by being here. Wherever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there's a pastime in Chaitanya Lila. Lord Chaitanya took sannyas and he wanted to go immediately to Vrindavan. And Lord Nityananda took him and brought him instead to Shantipur. Now, Shantipur is the home of Advaita Acharya. And Lord Chaitanya was thinking he was going to Vrindavan. And he said, I, I thought I was going to bring down. But Advaita Acharya said to Lord Chaitanya, that wherever you are, that is bring down. And so Vrindavan is not just some physical place on the map. But wherever the devotees are chanting the holy name. Then that is the abode of the Lord. 
Just like Rankata, wherever people are speaking the glories of Lord Ramachandra, who will come there? Anuman. Anuman will always come. You chant, you're doing Rankata, Anuman will come. You talk, when we do Krishna Kata, then certainly Krishna will come. He's there. He's present. You have Srimad Bhagavatam. How many have got Srimad Bhagavatam in your home? Some of you? Yeah. Okay, good. Are you reading? Yeah. Good. Are you reading Srimad Bhagavatam? Srimad Bhagavatam is non different from Lord Krishna. It's the literary incarnation. Krishna in the form of the scripture. Lord Krishna comes in the Kali Yuga. Krishna is for Dhamma Pagati, Dharma Gyanam Pisaha, Kalo Nishtam Gishamisha, Tumura Namsum Prinhopita. The sages in the Naimisharanya forest, they had gathered because Kali Yuga was coming and they were concerned. Lord Krishna had been on the planet. So long as Lord Krishna was present, he is the personification of all religion. But after Lord Krishna left the world, he departed from the world, the sages wanted to know where are all the religious principles to be found? Because Krishna is gone. Now Krishna was here, he's the personification of all the dharma, all the religion. But Krishna had left the world. Now, where, where is all the dharma to be found? Where is all the religious principle? So Sutta Goswami replied, he said, Krishna Swadhamma Bhagati, Dharma Jnana. This Srimad Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun. It has arisen just after the of Lord Krishna for his own abode. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of the age of Kali will get light from this Purana. So we read Srimad Bhagavatam. I probably said just by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, you can see Krishna on the pages, in the pages of the Bhagavatam. You want to see Krishna? Who wants to see Krishna? Yeah. Are you qualified? You can see him in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Just by the regularly reading Srimad Bhagavatam. You can see Krishna. You don't have to go there to bring him. Just read Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna is there. So we encourage all of you in this holy month of Kati, you breathe every day, you sing this down every day, you offer the lamp, you pray to Lord down there. May we always remember this wonderful pastime. What is this pastime? Mother Yashoda chasing Krishna. Right? How many of you have a son? Quite a few of you. <laughs> Do you chase your son with a stick? <laughs> Usually, mother gets angry, she gets a stick <laughs> chased after the son. Uh, so, Mother Yashoda had been churning the butter. And she had, because the, her husband, Tarashya, how many cows does he have? And like how many cows do you have? <laughs> You're all poor. Yes. You don't have any cows. My God, you're all so poor. No cows, no cow dung. What do you cook with? No cow dung. <laughs> so unfortunate. Mother Yashoda was churning the yogurt and making the, the ghee and like that, turning the milk into yogurt to butter, to make butter. She had this special power. 
which she kept, and she would give them special grass. She would give them lotus flowers to eat, these special cows, and she would keep the milk from these cows. Very nice milk, very thick, very creamy milk, and she keep it to give to her son. Right? Hmm. You have a son, you cook for your son, right? The mother will cook for her son, and she wants to give the nice food to her son. Mother Yashoda was keeping this milk, nice milk to give to her son Krishna. And she was cooking. In time she was churning the butter. And she had there was a cake of churning the butter. And Krishna came to Mother Yashoda. Krishna's a little boy. He wants to drink the best milk. Right? Now, nowadays, the mother sometimes is people say one or two months, a few months, then they get tired and do That's not anymore. Mother Yashoda was feeding breast milk to Krishna. Krishna, three or four years old, is still drinking breast milk. So, so I will be very happy with this breast milk to the mother. It's very good for the child. So Krishna liked, he loved to drink Mother Yashoda's breast milk. But Mother Yashoda had been cooking and she saw the milk was boiling over. The very special milk from these special cows was boiling over. And here's Krishna, she's feeding her breast milk. Oh my goodness, what's she going to do? She puts down Krishna. And she goes to take care of the milk. So Krishna's not pleased. Krishna's angry. I wanted to drink my mother's milk. He dance. He goes to take care of that stupid milk on the stove. She's neglecting. So Krishna was upset. So Krishna thought, I'll do I'll give some mischief. And he saw the butter of the yogurt all hanging from the ceiling. He got some stones and began to break the pots, and the yogurt fell down on the floor. The mother you should have gone to take care of the milk. She put Krishna down. And so Krishna broke the pots and the yogurt, and then the monkeys got the monkeys come and have some yogurt and feeding the butter to the monkeys. At the same time, he knows. Mother Yashoda will be angry. Little boys know, right? When the mother's happy, when Krishna's watching, is my mother coming? He's looking around. Mother Yashoda went to take care of the milk, and then she came back and she said, Where did Krishna go? Krishna, and then she said, Oh no, no look, she's broken all the parts, broken all the butter parts, the butter and yogurt all over the floor, monkey. Where's Krishna? Oh, there he is over there. He's sitting over there with the monkeys and sitting eating the butter. The mother Yashoda is coming with this stick in her hand, which she used for churning. And she's coming, and Krishna's looking, and he sees his mother coming. Oh, mother coming in. <laughs> Jumped up and ran. And mother Yashoda sees him running. She runs out. Come back, come back. And he's, she's got the stick. He's waving the stick. Come back, come back. Like, no, no, you won't leave me. I'm not coming back. No, put down the stick. I'll come back. Mother Yashoda. <laughs> Mother Yashoda, of course, she would never beat Krishna. You should not beat the children. <laughs> no beating the children. Especially the first five years. You cannot beat the children. There's no beating. <laughs> you don't beat the children. You have to love them. Anyway, Mother Yashoda, she was chasing with a stick. And Krishna, oh, Mother Yashoda is coming. She's running. Mother Yashoda is chasing Krishna. And they ran around the courtyard. Krishna is running. He said, Mother Yashoda is waving the stick, come back, come back. Krishna said, put down the stick, I'll come back, put down the stick, I'm not going to come, don't leave me. Krishna's running, Mother Yashoda. Finally, Krishna lets Mother Yashoda catch him. Right? And, and Mother Yashoda, 
Of course, Krishna is pretending, he's pretending he's afraid of his mother. Actually, Mother Yashoda is always Krishna's mother. Devaki, she did tapasya to become Krishna's mother, but she didn't get any of the childhood lila with Krishna. Only Mother Yashoda gets that lila. Devaki, she could give birth to Krishna, but she didn't get to enjoy the lila, the childhood lila. When you have a son, right? When he's a little boy, it's nice. Right? You're the mother and the little boy will listen to you and be obedient. But when they grow up, you know, once they get to like 12, 15 years old, it'll be a bit different, right? It's not going to hold your hand anymore. You know, it's not going to be the little sweet boy anymore. Go with your shopping and they grow up. So the, the, the sweet part of being the mother is when the child is the young, the young boy. It can be the mother. Once the child grows up, forget it. <laughs> Not the same anymore. They're already grown up. So Yashoda, she enjoys the child who is real. She got to give birth to Krishna. And later on, after Krishna killed Kamsa, then Krishna brought that Vasudev and Devaki out of the prison house of Kamsa. And Devaki and Vasudev were with Krishna again. And that was in Mathura, and then they was Dwarka. So in Dwarka, Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj were not there. Only Vasudev and Devaki are there. But Krishna's grown up. It's not the little boy. The childhood Lila is only for Nanda and Yashoda. And this wonderful pastime of Krishna breaking the parts of yoga and being chased by Mother Yashoda, this takes place on the Diwali day. This is the event. And although it takes place just one time only, but we celebrate it every day in this month. We remember this wonderful past. Why do we remember? Because Krishna is the Supreme Lord, but he's being chased by his mother. He's being, he's the Lord of everyone, but he's being chased by his mother, and then Mother Yashoda is going to tie him up. Right? She's going to get the rope and tie him to the mortar. So, who can do these things? Only Mother Yashoda can do these things. Under the arrangement of Krishna. It's all going on and under Krishna's arrangement. To give pleasure to his devotee. And ultimately, of course, Krishna has another purpose also. When Mother Yashoda ties up Krishna, at that time, Lord Krishna knocks over the two trees which are growing in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. And from the two trees, who comes? The two sons of Kuvera. The two sons of Kuvera. Manigriva and Nanda Kuvera. They come out from the tree and they surrender to Krishna and they promise to Krishna, we won't do any more nonsense. Now we're going to be your devotee. We've seen your childhood Leela, and Krishna sends them back to heaven, back to Kuvera. So this one pastime of Dhammadar Leela is so wonderful and so much relished by devotees because they're thinking, how wonderful that Lord Krishna, who is the supreme controller, can be controlled by his mother, Mother Yashoda, and she can tie him up, and Krishna can uh, enjoy this wonderful exchange with him. So we remember this devotees who are cultivating this mood of devotion to Krishna, 
some people even they want to follow the that move the mother Yashoda, not that they can become mother Yashoda, but they can remember the example of mother Yashoda and how much love she had for Krishna. She's a, such a great devotee, greater than Brahma or even Shiva, mystic they are all insignificant in the position of Mother Yashoda. So when we sing the Dhammajar has to come, we remember all of these pastimes. Okay, Hare Krishna. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Yes, go to the Dhammajar journey. Yes. You must have a lot of good singers here. Right? We want to have your singers. <laughs> mm -hmm. <There> you <laughs> I'm an insignificant servant. So you are going to offer the land? Yeah. Okay. Recording stopped.